We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord.
And we will say that you are good And all the miracles you've done as God has told That we have shared And all the hope we have We bless in you right now for gathering us here again you're welcome it's missions week 2022 and this evening we are privileged to have all our elders our deacons our deaconesses and you also here the lord bless you so much for coming and we have our papa in the house oh that noise and good have. and then we have Okay, you know the name of our papa, right? Okay. <laughs> then our mother is also here with us. Pastor and Mrs. Yerebi are here. The Lord bless you so much. It's a wonderful evening. This evening, we are receiving the ministration of one of the powerful apostles in the house. He is the immediate past 
youth director of the Church of Pentecost. And currently, he's the national head for our church in Tanzania. And this evening, we are going to fellowship with him and with the people in Tanzania. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome into our meeting Apostle David Nyansa Hefron. Oh, put your hands together for him. My former boss, my former boss, my former boss. Hello, Apostle. Okay, we need to hear, we need to be able to hear him. Hello, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, Apostle, you're welcome to PIWC, Kanishi. Um, we're excited. Asante sana, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Thank you so much. We're excited about fellowshipping with you this evening. Um, how are you doing? Uh, by the grace of God, we are very fine here. We thank God. How is mommy? How are the children at home? And then how is the COVID? -19? Mommy is fine with me here. Wow. Um, our, our kids are all in Ghana. Five of them, they are all in Ghana. They are doing very well by God's mm. grace. How is the COVID situation like in Tanzania? Hello? Yes, hello. Yes, we were asking how the what, what's the situation like in Tanzania? The COVID situation. COVID nineteen. Well yeah. um right from the beginning Tanzanians did not accept the reality of COVID nineteen. Former president Magufuli um did not fully accept it and he he managed to get it into them that this was a hoax. Wow. And uh, so um not until he died covid was not you know handled seriously here but after his death the new president encouraged uh, she encouraged you know uh, face mask wearing uh, in some in public places you know like the airports before you enter they would ensure you wear the mask to the airports uh, the major hotels but apart from that um, nobody wears mask anywhere you know, to wow. church and all that. So um, at a point, we had to really encourage our pastors to uh, wear when the rate of infections uh, came up a, a bit, but now it's normal to them. And so uh, you don't find people you know, deliberately wearing the mask here. You don't hear about COVID-19 uh, infectivity rates and statistics on death and infection. No, you don't hear that here. Wow. Awesome. Okay, before we continue, we would like to receive... Life is normal. Very normal here. <laughs> Life is normal. It's getting... Uh, becoming normal in Ghana too. Um, <laughs> we would like to receive a presentation from Apostle before we continue with other questions. So, Apostle... Welcome to PRWC Kanishi. Please let's hear you. All right, I'll be sharing my screen soon. But as I do that, you can enjoy this song. Hallelujah. 
I am sure that you identified the voice that was singing. So um, that that is um, Mrs. Georgina Santi. Yeah. So she's just saying that the best news that you will ever hear in your lifetime is that Jesus loves you. The best news that you would ever hear in your life is that Jesus loves you. So that is Gina Santi. Uh, we are we are packaging this song to be our main evangelistic song for our major crusades this year. We have three major crusades this year, um, and so uh, that is already a PRWC Kaneshi Tanzania partnership on the way already. So thank you very much. Mungu awabariki nini yote. I want to begin my presentation by thanking God for this opportunity and also thanking resident minister, Reverend Pastor Sechi Yirebi and his wife and the entire executive and presbytery of PIWC Kaneshi. God richly bless you all. Now, my definition of mission is this, that mission is God's activity of granting shalom you know, that is reconciling humans to himself and also the restoration of his creation in which an invitation is thrown to human agents who seek God's glory to participate in administering and advancing God's shalom. That's how I understand mission. You know, as, as a, a student of mission, I see mission as God's own activity of restoring the shalom that once was lost by reconciling humans to himself and also restoring the creation because the creation was made for um, humanity and humanity was made to take care of creation and the apostle paul makes us understand in the book of romans chapter 8 that the fall of man also led to the restriction the restrictive curse that was placed on creation so that the entire creation is grown in until now that the earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, wherein they also will be enabled to um, release their full potential. And so I understand that the mango tree, the, the, the pear tree, the apple tree, and all of them are producing at sub-minimal level. They are not being able to show us their true potential because of the curse. And they are also groaning you know, to be liberated from that bondage so that they would show us their full potential. Oh, how the millennial rule is going to be enjoyable. But until we get there, we are invited as human agents who seek God's glory to participate in administering and advancing God's shalom through uh, various activities. Today, when we talk about mission, it is not just proclamation. Today, mission includes proclamation. It includes um, taking care of the environment. It includes interfaith dialogue. It includes ecumenical dialogue. It includes um, gender advocacy. It includes um, um, other um, human, you know, activities that would ensure that we have shalom, we have peace here on earth. And so an invitation is thrown to all of us and whoever responds to this mission of God becomes a missionary. And so you and I are all missionaries. And the work the church and individuals do in response to the invitation from God is what we refer to as missions with an S. So the mission of God has placed us in missions. That is the difference. And so um, diagrammatically, we can say that the mission of God, which is the Missio Dei, God who came after humanity, the God who came and asked the first question that ever was asked, Adam, where are you? God who was looking for human beings. is the same God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the world. And so the Missio Dei, became the Missio Christi when Jesus announced his manifesto. And he went out around seeking and saving that which was lost. We see 
um, Zacchaeus on a tree and Jesus beckoning him, you know, to come down for salvation had come to his house. Now it is this same Missio Christi that has become what we call the Missionaries Ecclesiae, which is the missions of the church. And so the mission of God, the mission of Christ, has become the missions of the church powered by the Holy Spirit. And all of us who are partakers are in partnership with the Lord. Our mission is grounded in the Great Commission that was announced by Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And in that commission, um, we are to take the gospel to every people group, every people group, so that the nations of the world will become the kingdom of our God, so that the kingdoms of the earth would become the kingdom of our God. Hallelujah. Now, the mission story of the Church of Pentecost would be incomplete without um, eulogizing James and Sophia Macion, who left the shores of um, Britain and came to the Gold Coast in 1937. Even today, when you go to a Kesey, um after so many years, um, it is still not, you know, the cities, I mean, the, 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 the type of city many of us may want to live in. So 1937, Isa was a big sacrifice for James and Sophia, who came down and sacrificed, began with a local group, eventually moved to Across, and then to Winneba, to Cape Coast, and then to Accra, and then uh, to all parts of Ghana, and then to West Africa, and then to what we see today. Uh, they didn't do it alone, but they were critical catalysts. God used them and the other members of the team, the locals, the indigenous, to establish a formidable foundation which we now are part of. Now, the covenant that God has with this church is to send missionaries to Africa and the rest of the world, you know, to herald the second coming of Christ. And so, strategically, God has placed the Church of Pentecost um, today in 135 nations, you know, with 58 more to go. And um, you see that um, God is moving and he will continue to do. Uh, what it means is that in the next five or so years, we probably would see the Church of Pentecost established in each of the 193 nations recognized by the United Nations. And if we work hard, all of us will be satisfied when God achieves this through us. And so the missions of the church is just a statement of our response to God's mission and commission. And I know and I trust that each one of us is serious about God's mission and will do everything to push it forward. So God richly bless you. I know we will reach the world for Christ. Now let me come to the Tanzanian situation. The church in Tanzania began um, with an exploration by Apostle Alfred Kudia somewhere around 1995 when he was a missionary in Zambia. He took a train, train from Zambia. He and his wife, you know, sat in a train for days. From Zambia, he came to Tanzania. From Tanzania, he continued to Kenya. And then he went to Uganda. He did a round trip you know, just looking for opportunities for the work to spread. Now he returned back, and then later in 1996, uh, then Pastor S.Y. Entry, now Apostle S.Y. Entry, was sent to Tanzania for three months to come and do some groundwork. And then a ministry was begun that was manned by an indigenous until uh, the year 2000, when Pastor A.E.K. Ekuban, Suhum area head, was uh, sent here to Tanzania as the first resident missionary. Now, he stayed on 2007 when Apostle Nicolas Sapia Misa came here, who stayed here until 2012. And then Apostle Daniel Yabu uh, Safo. Uh, who is the Kofordio FGRC area head, also came here from 2012 to 2017. And then Pastor Eric Somoa took over from 2017 to 2021. 
and then we started last year. And so these are former missionaries, Apostle Kuban, Apia Misa, and Safo, and then um, Sumwa, Pastor Sumwa. Um, the demographics of Tanzania, we have about 61 million people, which means that it's about twice the size of Ghana in terms of population. Um, Christian percentage is 61.4 and Muslims are 35.2. So compared to Ghana, it's, it's, it's almost looking the same, except that there are more Muslims here than in Ghana. And most of the Muslims are in the South. Recording in progress. Instead of, uh, I mean, in our situation, uh, we have the idea that there are more Muslims in the North. Um, of course, other, other statistics might prove otherwise. But um, there are 35% uh, of Tanzanians are Muslims. Now, because Dar es Salaam used to be the capital, now it's Dodoma. Dodoma is the new capital of Tanzania. And when people hear Dar es Salaam, they think, oh, Tanzania is an Islamic nation. No. Christians are in the majority here. And the average age in Tanzania is 18 years, which means it's a, a fairly youth population. It's a youth population. Uh, Tanzania is very big. In fact, in terms of land size, it's about three times and over the size of Ghana. It's about three times and over. Uh, when you add Kenya to Uganda to Rwanda, then you'll be approaching the size of Tanzania. Very, very, very big place. And so the districts are far apart. I'm going to show you uh, some uh, pictures soon. But the nearest district from Dar es Salaam, where I am, is Dodoma, which is the capital city. And when I was driving to the place, I took 11 hours to drive in to Dodoma. That is the nearest, nearest to Dar es Salaam. The farthest is Kigoma, which will take three days on the road. Three days on the road. And you need to come and see the vehicle here. And uh, you see that Grace, Grace is powerfully working here. Um, so if you are going to Kigoma, you need to take three days, three days to get there and then do ministry and take another three days to come. Now, when I begin to share the challenges, you would appreciate some dynamics. But it's a very big country. And um, so that is that. Um, let me activate the... Okay. All right. So I'm trying to... Right. So if you can see the the Kesa, this is this is Zanzibar. This small one here is Zanzibar. Yeah, and we have no church there in Zanzibar yet. We have a church here in Dar es Salaam, the small red portion. And then we have a church from Dar es Salaam, the next place is Dodoma here. And then we have a church in Iringa here. And then we have a church, we jump to go to Tabora here. Then we have a church at Mwanza up here. And then we have a church at Kigoma down here. Now from Dar es Salaam to Kigoma, you take three days on the road to get there. Uh -huh. And so you can imagine, it's just like Mwanza, you take two and a half days to get there. Uh, that is how big Tanzania is. And we do not have churches in all these other provinces, you know, all these other places. We don't have churches. All these places, we don't have churches. But by God's grace, we are in eight of their provinces. And I'll continue with the statistics. Um, so the adult po uh, population is about 1,006 on paper. Um, on the ground, it is much smaller. And then the children are 763. Ghanaians here are 11. But the 11, nine of them are University of Ghana students who have come here for a one-year exchange program. When they leave, it's only Mama and myself who are Ghanaians. 
we have other nationals, some Germans, some um, Congolese, some Ivorians, we have uh, some Ugandans, all of them, about 22 of them. And then we have um, the Tanzanians are about 2,420 on paper. We have 25 elders, 18 deacons, and 24 deaconesses. Uh, so that is the statistics of the church. We have a, um, a growing multicultural PRWC. As I said, we have different nationals here. And so our PRWC children and adults is about 100. They are doing their best. It has a bright future. Um, we try, you know, uh, pull in a lot of intellectuals who will be able to help to spread the work uh, at the other cities. Tanzania has a number of good cities, major cities, which are very beautiful. Except that um, our missionaries who started the work there were using the centrifugal, you know, approach where they started from the fringes and hope that they'll be able to get to the city center. But I know it's more difficult when you do that. When you start from the village and hope that the village folk will be able to reach out to the city folk. And um, that is the challenge we are having now. And so now we want to begin from the city centers and then build strong churches. And then from there, we'll be able to reach out to the peripheries. Then we have a Maasai church. Now there are as many Maasai in Tanzania as there are in Kenya. The fact of the matter is that the capital of the Maasai is actually in Arusha, here. All the, all the Maasai have their, their capital city here. So those in Kenya and all of them, they come to Arusha. Arusha is the home of, I mean, the, 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 the base of the Maasai tribe, and it is in Tanzania. Now, our Maasai church has grown from five members to 12 in the past two months still growing. The reason why it is like that is that they are uh, very mobile. They are, they, are, they are nomadic people who move very uh, frequently. And so the people who come to the today will not be the people you will see tomorrow. I've baptized a lot of sites, but they, they move in search of jobs and also taking care of their cattle. So you only hope that when the church becomes big and we are in every city, then they can reconnect back as they move around. Now, that's our PRWC, which the headquarters bought for us about three years ago. Um, it has become um, the hope that we have, you know, um, to be able to um, do many things and refocus and reposition the church. This is the Masai Church. This was our Christmas convention Sunday picture. Now, the pavilion you see there is a rented pavilion. We pay every time we use that place for service. Now, some of the challenges include the following. There are no mission houses apart from the National Mission House. Uh, and so what I have done is that um, the pastor who is here in Dar es Salaam with me, um, I have shared the mission house in the past three months we have we, we we are living together so he and his family you know uh, we've we've shared the mission house and then we are we are living together with them the other places um there are no mission houses owned by the church so the pastors have their own uh, means of accommodation when the church does not pay for because we cannot uh, some of them are in their family houses And, and and things like that. Because of that, you can't transfer ministry at one place for 15 years, and you know what happens when people stay at one place for so long. And then the church buildings, too, apart from two completed ones, that is the PI I showed you, and then the Kipunguni church, which is he here near my house, uh, which is the old old type of, uh, you know, uh, um, the matchbox type of church with no ceiling um just the roofing sheet you know and then we we hang the lights bulbs in uh, these are the two uh permanent chapels here i mean church buildings here 
The rest are all makeshift, you know, temporary structures. And so in March, that the rains are going to start, many of them will find it very difficult to meet. It's an annual thing. Um, whenever the rains come for weeks and months, many of them cannot go to church. And then most of the assemblies, including Dodoma, the capital city, has no musical instruments or technical equipment. So uh, what they do is that they record songs on the pen drive, slot it in, and then we just follow. Uh, uh, the long distances between districts, as, as I have said, practically impossible for you to pay the straight visit and then come back. No. Or uh, even do that within um, a short space of time. And so many times, and then it comes with a lot of, of cost also. A fuel and then other things. Many unreached cities. If you are traveling on a three day journey, for example, you have to stop on the way in the night to look for places to stay before you continue. Mm -hmm. Then the language barrier and the, the main language here is Swahili. It is used in school, it is used for everything, it's the school language, market language, everything. And so we are really learning it. You know, and um, uh, because without that, you cannot communicate. Whenever we go to church, if there is no interpreter, we ourselves cannot do anything. And so you can imagine, it complicates our tracks. As you move from Dar es Salaam, the other churches, you wouldn't find, in many places, you won't find anybody who can even speak broken English. And so you have to carry someone with you from Dar es Salaam. Now you can imagine if the person is also working. And you have to drive for three days in, finish trekking for a week and drive for three days back. That is about two weeks. Uh -huh. And once a person is not your employee, what happens? Uh -huh. And so these are real challenges. Now there are low income levels of the members also. In fact, apart from the PIWC that is able to support itself and then they are tight, we can get some to pay the pastors. The salary of the pastors here is not very huge. In fact, since I came, we have increased it by more than 40% within the last six months. And even that one, the senior most minister gets just about 700 Ghana cities. And then Recording in this progress. Case, um, many of the districts will bring their tithes, and you find that it's just about um, maybe 20,000 Tanzanian shillings, which is just about um, 55 Ghana cities or 60 Ghana cities. That is the district tithes. And then maybe someone is bringing the one who have done very well might bring you 90,000, which is just about um, 270 Ghana cities. Meanwhile, the pastor is being paid 700. And we pay them from our own internally generated funds. Uh -huh. So the little that the PRW is able to add, we, we just share it among the pastors and then on, on salaries. Uh -huh. And so there's a lot of sacrifice that go into the work here when a member is sick they come to the missionary and when the wife is pregnant and it's time to give birth they bring the pregnant woman they are they bring the person to you and when they are sending their children to hospital they bring them to you you sometimes have to drive them to the hospital if the hospital is far and then things like that when people need have personal needs they come to them Is, is the second economic hub of Tanzania. After Dar es Salaam, Mwanza will come before the capital city, Dodoma. 
Now, Mwanza is very close to the Lake Victoria. Um, very beautiful city, as you can see. Um, you expect that in such a place, we should be able to have a very vibrant period of business. There are a lot of multinational companies who have reps in Mwanza, and um, it, is, it is a beautiful place. But look at our church in Mwanza. <laughs> look at our church in Mwanza. Hmm. And so, uh, when I got to Mwanza, the officers told me that when they go out for evangelism and they get souls and they are bringing them, then the people ask them, is that a corn mill or is it a church? You know? And so, uh, many people don't want to go. Uh, come uh, now this is temeke in dar salam this is in the in the in the in the main city dar salam this is our second assembly in dar salam it is just 10 meters from a, a major rail road in front of the church is is a major rail road Let's use some iron sheets to create an enclosure and they meet under. This is Tabora waiting to be roofed. You know, they are, they are waiting for the national office to come and roof. The members were able to build this and they are waiting for us to come and roof. There are many, many others. Even in Dodoma, the capital city, um, it's, it's a it is not a completed chapel and it's not even at a good location. It is sited in a corner somewhere. But if you believe and I believe and we together pray and act, I know that the Holy Spirit will come down and Tanzania shall be revived. I see that there is hope for a massive transformation. But God has work to do. We also have work to do. And you also have work to do. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank you so, so much, Apostle. Wow. We have questions. So many questions. After watching and listening to you. Um, the first question we would like to ask can you share with us the most challenging situation you had to face since you started this work as a missionary in Tanzania? It is well. Recording in progress. Hello, Apostle. Oh. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we thank you so much for the presentation. We want to find out um, what has been the most challenging thing. Can you share with us the most challenging situation you've had? Can you share with us the most challenging situation you've 
Hello, Apostle, please, can you hear us? Okay, so... Please, can the host type in the chat for me? Okay. Because I cannot hear anything at all. Wow, you still can't hear? Hello? Hello? Please, can you hear me? I've been muted. Hello, Apostle. Hello, Apostle. Can somebody type, please? Can somebody, okay. Yes. Yes, Apostle. Hello. The question. The most challenging situation. He's hard to deal with. Okay. No, as a missionary in Tanzania. So your lunch is somebody's monthly tights. That was that was something. <laughs> yeah. Right. Recording in progress. The most challenging situation as a missionary in Tanzania. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think that it is a big challenge when you visit a church and you realize that with a little help with, let's say, or oh, um, um, musical instruments and Things like that, you know, things that we take for granted in most contexts. You know that that would have made the church a more lively, more vibrant place. And yet, you see poverty written on the faces of the people. You want to and. Please, is the sound clear? Yes, we can hear you. In progress. Uh, please, can you hear me now? Please tell him that. Please, you can type the questions in the chat for me. Okay. Please tell him that we didn't hear. Okay, can he repeat the first answer, please? <laughs> Right. Um, I'm repeating the first answer I gave. Yes, my answer is that it is challenging when in the missions field you know we have been able to win souls but these souls are people with very low economic levels people who live in remote villages they have come to accept the lord we want to build healthy churches you preach about giving 
they have understood the message they love the Lord they want to build a church but the physical um, capacity you know is just not there you preach about giving you encourage them to give and they give their best and their best is still not able to get them a roof over their head and um, get them basic equipment you know sometimes the battery in the in the in in the microphone you know dies and they are looking up to the missionary to get a new one and sometimes you think that it's an attitude but you research and find out that the people just do not have and for me that is very challenging sometimes Please, I don't know if my answer was clear. Please, I don't know if my answer was clear. So sorry about these network challenges that we are experiencing. But kindly keep the questions coming in the chat. Hello. Hello, Apostle. Yes, so I have seen. Yes, I have seen another question. How expensive is it to acquire a place of worship? Now, if you are thinking about land and constructing, first of all, in the city centers, the rates are different from the rural areas. But if you take the very urban context, for a number of our churches that already have land, we have some of the churches that already have land. So let me use those ones as the basis of my evaluation. Yeah, because I think that those who have land already uh, could become starting points if we want to um, help them than those who are now going to look for land. And so if someone already has land, then um, putting up a structure that can accommodate about 200 people here would cost you about um, 30 to 40,000 US dollars. Uh, about 30 to 40,000 USD for a simple structure. Uh, a small one that can accommodate about 100, 150 people. If you want to one that can accommodate, let's say, 250, 300 people, then you should be looking at somewhere about 50 to 60,000 USD. A very good one, you know, a, a, a very good church with, you know, the required facilities also. You know, a very good church with the required facilities there. Here, we are not for now thinking about building churches that are thousand capacity or 800 or those big, big, big. None of our congregations is anywhere close to that. And so thinking of 100 capacity, 150, 200, um, 250 to stretch it to a limit. Yes. Um, and it depends on the, the type of building you we want to put up. But I think that anything um, above um, 30,000 USD should be able to attempt um, a decent small building. Yes. Yes, please, Mama Gina. Yes. Yes. Uh 
हाँ I would say that it should be easier to buy them here. Yes, because we are, you know, at the east coast of Africa. Um, those who bring things from um, the east, Asia and other things, it is, it is easier to get here than, you know, coming all the way to West Africa. And so some of the things are cheaper here than if you want to get them in Ghana. And so once the funds are available, I think they can be able to get a number of the things here. And that also avoids the complication of, you know, these equipment, transporting them, handling and other things. Um, Okay, so thank you. I think that um, the first major breakthrough we we have had is the PIWC in Dar es Salaam, which is being led by Pastor Emmanuel Sika Kwame and his wife. They are going to leave Tanzania um, this year. Um, we've been able to gather um, some people, um, children and adults, about a hundred. And so we want that one to grow. We want that one to grow. We also want to set up um, PIWCs in Dodoma, the capital, in Mwanza and Arusha. This would be capital intensive. And we want to um, believe God for some massive breakthroughs and also strategic support from individuals and the missions board to be able to start. The point is that See, the way this PIWC in Dar es Salaam started is this. Once the head, head office was able to buy the property, you know, for them, and they had a meeting place, they had equipment, it was easy to begin. Mm -hmm. And so we want to at least strategically um, open the next PIWC by the end of this year in another city. You know, and that also helps. We are also engaging various partners, and all of you here can be partners also to see how we can team up individuals who can team up and want to do something to God's glory, you know, to strategically help us to set up city churches. And so this year we have three crusades. All these crusades are strategically. Um, positioned in these major cities that we are looking at. We want to win souls in these cities to add on to the ones we already have, the, the rural ones. And then when we are starting a new church, we want it to be um, 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 uh, an English assembly type. Uh -huh. Of course, here, even the PIWC, they still use Swahili and English. And so if we say PIWC, all we are trying to say is that a place where international or you know, multinational people will feel more comfortable so that we can have strong centers. As I said, the distances are so wide. If we have another strong center in Mwanza, another strong center in Dodoma, then those people will be able to evangelize you know, the little um, communities around them. Mm -hmm. It is so enormous. We can't do all in a five-year period. We have a roadmap. We have clearly demarcated the vision. And we want to do the little we can. So for now, we are concentrating on three major cities. Three major cities and believing God for breakthrough. Already we have had one breakthrough where someone is ready to... Um, 
um, help with a church building in one of the places we have earmarked. And so we believe that God is already ahead of us. And the fire is burning. And the roho mtakatifu anatembea. The spirit is already moving. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Um, if you have a question, you could please bring it. But with your roadmap, like you just said, hello? Hello? We are also looking at making small gains. Pardon? Please, you said you were looking at Hello? Yes. We can hear you, please. Hello? Hello? Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, please. I was making a point that as we look to God for the big breakthroughs, we also want to make sure that the churches that are already existing are strengthened. And we are strengthening them by, uh, in, in most cases, just getting them good equipment, you know, so that they can run decent services. And we have done for one assembly where we bought a set of drums and the PA system, you know, and a projector. And all that was in the all that costed us about three thousand nine hundred US dollars. Uh -huh. So we, we are seeing that three thousand five hundred to four thousand USD can make one church that is that is struggling a healthy church uh -huh, with a full complement of equipment so that at least they can also begin attracting more people um, within their communities. And so that is also something we have started, to give health to the churches. As I showed you the pictures, for Temeke, what we want to do is that we want to um, refurbish you know, that dilapidated structure for them so that at least they will have a sense of decency as they worship God. Um, so... That is also another angle that we are targeting. That the weak churches will become healthy and they can also attract people into their fold. Okay. Hello. Amen. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for that concern, Elder. Um, the fact of the matter is that um, we have seven pastors. They are all indigents. Um, four of them are clerical pastors, two overseers, and one probationary overseer. None of them is English-speaking. None of my pastors can speak English. And so um, we always have to get an interpreter before we can communicate with, with the pastors. Uh, when the pastor we have brought to Dar es Salaam now, who is living with me, we have gotten him an English teacher, and um, we want him to learn how to speak English, he and his wife, so uh, we are we are put, put him in a class, we've got him a laptop, 
and uh, we are getting him someone to teach him how to do these things so he can at least break that barrier with us and then he can be a very effective tool for us to communicate with the others when it comes to their salaries clearly because the salaries are so low many of them um, who are um, carpenters and artisans and others they still do their work and because of that they cannot i mean they don't give all their time to the church because of this uh -huh. that is also slowing down the work we are trying to encourage them to give more time to the work but when the salary levels are low definitely they will do what they can now because of the salaries we can't also attract the intellectuals to come in i get your question is there any way we can improve upon this um whenever i think about this from a development perspective i think about continuity i think about um a system that can be sustained you know and so um is it um all right to just get uh, maybe some money somewhere begin paying them big big monies and then when you are transferred and you are not there they go back or do we tackle it from the aspect of helping them to take their work seriously so that they can eat from their own labor and so as i said when we came the senior pastors were receiving something in the range of um 450 ghana now it is it is 700 thereabouts and so we are going our focus is to move gradually as they themselves work hard and our focus is to attempt to um, call some graduates into the ministry and then i know they would they would come in with their own fire and they will be able to encourage the older ones to also give a higher commitment. I think that when it comes to remuneration, we should encourage people to work hard so that they eat from their labor. That way, it becomes sustainable. But if we quickly look for money and start throwing it at them, and they relax, yet get money. Tomorrow, I'm not there. Another missionary comes who might not be able to do that. And then the system becomes worse off than it was before and so i think that let us continue building healthy churches let us continue to give them the tools for the work at least let them have the equipment to do evangelism grow the churches and then let's continue teaching on tithes and offering and i see it is working i see it is working gradually and so next month in april we are going to increase their salaries a little bit more and give them salary arrears from january uh, up to april and then continue with the new rates i wanted us to observe the tides for this year but before we commit ourselves and so for that one i want us to manage it from a a, a strategic perspective not only to uh, mobilize external funds and start paying them uh, heavy salaries and uh, not have an assurance that it will be sustainable and so maybe that is what i will say about their salaries for now i'm looking at it keenly and i pray that i'll be able to lead a kind of growth that will bring them to a comfortable place where they can be well paid they didn't have a means of transport now they have the motorbikes and they get monthly fuel they are extremely excited by some of these interventions we are trying to start paying their social security but we don't pay no uh, we are now beginning to pay their social security my oldest pastor will go on retirement in, in eight years time there's no pension plan in the nation so we want to put some of those structures in place and start building a system you know and encourage them to grow so that they can benefit from the system. That way, I think it will be more sustainable. No, in the church, the church, we haven't done that for the pastors. And that's something we want to do. We want to do health insurance for them at least, and then begin to. And then we are also deciding that 
if we're able to get money, at least where they are staying, if it is not decent enough, we should be able to rent them decent accommodation at least to start with. When they are assured that we can rent decent accommodation, we can transfer. I see that the whole growth is 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 buckled down by some of these things. You know, once we, we can transfer past this, you see that everybody will start working harder and then um new gift will go to new places and then growth will come. And so we want to take some strategic steps, but it is all to be connected to an organic growth, you know, a growth that is from below, you know, strengthening the local structures, strengthening the local churches so that the growth would be from below, you know, strength will come from the ground and then we'll build upon it gradually up. Okay. Right, I am encouraged by the fact that I know the God who has called me, and he has never left me. He who called me is with me, and he has never left me. And so I have no business getting discouraged. Um, again, um, when it comes to... Um, what, what was your other... Yes, the prayer point, I'm going to share it now. Uh, these are our prayer points for the year uh, for the Church of Pentecost Tanzania, as you can see. Um, so we want to pray for spiritual and numerical growth of the church. We want to pray that our vision of establishing at least 10 new churches will materialize in the year. We want to pray that God will raise more leaders who love the church and will work with the policies of the church. We want to pray for financial breakthrough to be able to construct decent church buildings and mission houses to advance their work. We want to pray to support our drive to open new PIWCs in Mwanza and Dodoma. We want to pray uh, to support our quest to open the church in Zanzibar. And we want to pray to support the Maasai mission in Tanzania, that God will raise more committed leaders among the Maasai to help us open branches in Arusha, Tanga, and Dar es Salaam. So these are our prayer requests. Okay, so um, there are about two ways. The first one is that you can just pay to the missions office. And I mean, with your, your desire that this should be sent to Tanzania. And the missions office will receive, once you inform us that you have sent this to the missions office, we will follow up and the missions office will transfer into the church's account for us. Or you can transfer directly into the church's account here in Tanzania or you can also for example if 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 you give it to pastor if you have a support and you give it to pastor I know that he would also be able to make an arrangement with us and then let us have it here but the first one is paying at the missions office and informing us and the missions office would transfer it into the Tanzania account. That, that is the donations uh, for the Church of Pentecost in Tanzania. You can pay to the headquarters and it will be sent to us. Thank you very much.
ये ये Hmm. Here, Mungu awabariki nini nyote. Um, God bless you. Usiku muema. Bye.